for flexible cover that suits your individual healthcare needs. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the show. One in five people over the age of 35 have diabetes and the majority of them are blissfully unaware of it. Thankfully, the good news is that 80% of type 2 diabetes is preventable, not curable, preventable through making the right lifestyle choices. And we're going to spend the rest of today's show helping you make those right choices. The food you and I eat essentially is converted into glucose or sugar in our blood. Insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas, is needed to move sugar into the cells where it can be used for energy to run your body. When normal individuals eat, the right amount of insulin is automatically produced to move glucose from your blood into the cells of your body. In individuals with diabetes, however, the pancreas either produces no insulin, we call that type 1 diabetes, or the body does not respond to the effects of insulin, that is type 2 diabetes, which is by far the most common. Like so many medical conditions though, there's simply no way to know whether you have diabetes just by looking at yourself in the mirror. You could have diabetes right now, in fact. I've asked Widad, one of our audience members, to come up. She has no idea whether she has diabetes or not. So Widad, won't you join us? Let's give her a round of applause. Welcome. Without for centuries, diabetes testing mostly consisted of a physician dipping his finger into a urine sample, okay, and just sort of testing to see. <laughs> no, I'm teasing, this is apple juice, but it, you know, the, the illustration is there. Testing to see if there's a bit of sugar in the urine. Thankfully, we don't have to do that anymore, for doctors anyway. Uh, for patients, it means a bit of a finger prick, but it's called a random blood glucose test. Have you ever had a random blood glucose test? Um, no. Never? I don't think so. Can I, ask, can I ask how old you are? It's a terrible thing to ask, I know. Uh, 36. 26? 26. Okay. 26. 36. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I just make you say it louder, that's all. So 36 and you haven't had a blood glucose test yet? Mm. Okay. Are you, do you think there might be a chance that you have diabetes? Is there diabetes in the family? Might be, yeah. Might be. Okay. So, so this could be an important test for you. Mm. Are you having second thoughts? <laughs> no, I hope not. Because, no, no, no. Because we need to do this on a regular basis. You don't just yeah. test for diabetes once. You guys should go once a year even. <laughs> Who in your family has diabetes? Um, I think one of my brother and a cousin of mine. Okay, so it's a direct sibling, eh? Oh. Okay, so that's, that's a, an important sort of uh, historical fact or a risk factor fact, if you like, for diabetes. All right, I can feel the nerves. Can I have this, this finger there? We're gonna just sort of clip it on the outside of the, or in fact, that side of the finger. We're cleaning it so that we don't introduce any infection. And what we want in terms of a test is to get something that is below 5.5. Ouch. Wasn't that bad? You can't say ouch. I'm trying to encourage everyone to have a test. <laughs> All right, there we go. There's a little bit of blood, not much. Mm -hmm. We'll basically just attach that like that. There you go. All right. So that's going to tell us what your result is in a few moments. Give that a good squeeze. All right, while we wait for this test. So who's in danger of getting type 2 diabetes? Uh, the older you are, the bigger your risk, especially from 45 onwards. So that's not you, we don't, which yeah. is great. You did say... <laughs> 36, but I feel 16. <laughs> 16, 16 is great, okay. If a parent or sibling has diabetes, your risk goes up, so there your risk goes up there. The less active you are, the greater your chances of developing diabetes. Being overweight is a big risk factor. In fact, fat cells actually produce hormones which decrease insulin sensitivity. And although all ethnic groups are affected, the most at risk are our black community because of rapid lifestyle changes, people of Indian descent, also thanks to their genes. We have this test for you. Ideally, when you go for your test, and it's this quick really, whatever the result of the finger prick test, remember that a diabetes diagnosis must be confirmed by more than just one abnormal blood sugar result. As a rule of thumb, you want this little score here to be below 5.5, okay? If it's below 5.5, you're okay. If it's above 5.5, you need to go for a follow-up test. Would you like to see what your result is? Oh. Wow, my word, this is not... You know, <laughs> I have great news for you, okay. all right? 5.3 okay. is what you've got, all right? So you are below the 5.5 mark, which is great, we don't. What it means is that you need to go back in another year's time and repeat that blood sugar test and just watch that. Because you and I are not diabetic yet. But okay. can develop it. We can develop it, exactly. So, uh, isn't that good news? It's very good news. Of... <sighs> <Yeah. Any> Lee. 
<laughs> Remember, the reason we test regularly is because early diagnosis of diabetes is extremely important if complications are to be prevented or delayed. So can I encourage you all to get your sugar tested this week? If not today, it's money well spent. And for some people, your medical aid, if it's smart enough, will actually pay for the test for you. Over and above your blood glucose, it's worth screening for blood pressure, cholesterol and BMI regularly. And there's good reason for that. But if you don't know what your health status is, you, you don't know how well or how sick you are. Um, and a, a good old doctor friend of mine once told me that just because you're not sick doesn't make you healthy. So you've got to do something about it. And if you don't know what's wrong with you, you can't do anything about it. So it's important that one knows one's health status so you can actually start to do something and improve whether it's your cholesterol, your BMI, your blood pressure, your glucose levels, that you can actually take the right steps to, to improve one's health status. I think it's very, very important for, for people of the general public to have a good understanding of what their wellness is like, it's not just physically, but also financially. So you need to understand, well, how well am I? Because that's going to have an impact on your health care and your health care status. And later on in life, there's one thing you'll never be able to buy back, and that's your health status. So you've got to take the points now to improve it and to make sure that it's good for, for when you really need it later on in life. The financial wellness aspect is as important. You know, the last thing you want to do is, is, is have no money later in life. So plan today, do the right investments today, make sure you've got a good medical scheme today, so that those types of things are not impacting um, on your wellness, your financial wellness later on in your life. For someone on our medical scheme of mental health, it's important that you do the right thing first. And the first things, the first steps to, to, to rewarding oneself through our product is, is going through those, those sort of four market tests, if you like, the glucose, the, the cholesterol, the blood pressure, and your BMI. The second step is, is starting to measure activity. And the more active you are, the more money we provide back. And that activity doesn't ha only necessarily have to be in a gym like this. It can be through playing golf, it can be through walking your dog, it can be doing all of those components which we just do naturally in, in, in every walk of life. The more active you are, the more money you earn back. Save up to 35% on your contribution with Momentum Health.